Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Angie. And, and together, together we, we are, are Twinfinity. Twinfinity. We are Twin Flames in Union back for another video. This time we are talking about manifesting, surrendering, and a story about a Twin Flame workshop. So in the background is the Banff Center where the workshop happened, uh, I'll say one week ago from today. Yes. Today is October 14th, 2018. And we just had a fantastic, fantastic long weekend with a great group of people last yes. weekend. It worked out really well. So for those of you that weren't able to come, I know so many people have been saying, please do a video about it. So here we are doing a video about it, but it's also a video about surrendering and manifesting because we all need to learn how to do that. We all are trying to do that. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And we're going to share some stories with you about our surrendering and the lessons we have learned doing our very first workshop. So on that note, are you going first or am I going first? Um, I think I'll go first. Uh, when it comes to manifesting and surrendering, sometimes when manifesting doesn't necessarily work, it's surrendering that ends <laughs> up really happening. That's, that's very true. Yes. The two go hand in hand. You get one or the other if you've tried to do either one or the other. Yes. So at the this whole journey started one year ago when we were leaving Boston. Dio had mentioned to us that, yeah, the next workshop should be in Alberta, be our home province of Alberta, Canada. And I was thinking, yeah, maybe not. There probably should be another work, or workshop between then and now. Uh, I didn't think there'd be any direct leaving Boston and coming to Banff at all. There was our Alberta area because it was just, it, it seemed like so much. And besides, we were still buzzing from Boston. Yeah. Completely. And when Dio said Alberta, we were thinking, yeah, maybe some point we'll do one in Calgary. Never did we think Banff. Um, we wanted Banff because, I mean, it's beautiful out here and we come to the mountains so much. And there's so much energy out here, but we never thought it would work for, you know, Banff is a tourist place. So price and stuff, we just didn't think it was even possible. Too busy, too pricey, too touristy, too busy. Too everything. Too everything. Figured Calgary would have all the facilities. Yes. So we got the call in June, this past June, to do the workshop. And I'll be honest, I wasn't really happy about getting the call. Not that I have a problem doing the workshop. It was the timing that Spirit had that I wasn't really happy with. We were still doing weekly videos telling our story, and that was enough. Doing a weekly video is like a lot of work all by itself. That, that was almost too much. I was watching Angie putting in 10, 15 hours a week, just <laughs> answering questions from previous video and researching for the next one. I was super busy at work. I was, I was going through a transformation at my own place of work, and... Everything was just so, so, so busy. But starting in June, very early June, in the back of our minds, put there by, I'm going to say spirit, because we, 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 we weren't doing it ourselves, we started thinking about doing a workshop. Yeah. And I was thinking, uh, yeah, maybe next year, maybe 2019. But right from the get-go with those thoughts, Angie started to really step forward forward and I, I encouraged her a couple of times to wait but now it turned into a little bit of a research project which... well and you know how it is with spirit there is no wait when spirits pushing you to yep. do something you have to surrender to do that and I had to surrender that there was no stopping Angie <laughs> <laughs> she was hearing the call and I was okay well I guess if we're not going to wait we're going to step forward so we started to research stuff. Yeah, so I started looking into the place that's behind us and um, everything was not flowing. So we would either have the room we wanted, which if you've seen pictures of the workshop, I mean, the room was just stunning. There was like windows and posts, pillars of trees inside. Like it was just amazing to, to actually finally get to do the workshop there. But when we first were researching and I saw that room, that's the room I knew I wanted. But we either could get the room or we couldn't 
coordinate uh, facilitators for those dates that the room was available. So just nothing was flowing. So I finally, it's funny that, again, we're still reading our text, like our story videos that we were. I text Rob June 25th. I was just coming home from work and I was sitting at a red light and I was just churning in my head trying to figure out how to make this work. Timing of coordinating facilitators and trying to get the room and none of it was working. So I finally sent Rob a text and I said, interesting sync, just driving home feeling stressed and forgive my language, pissy about the whole workshop thing. And I just said out loud, bleep it. I crossed out what I actually said. I see that. <laughs> we just won't do it. And at the exact same time I said that, a bus drove by with the ad that said, don't give up. So I'm going to actually show you. There's the text I wrote here. Oh, I'm going to cover up Rob while I do it. That's okay. <laughs> so I actually printed it out. And I even went back later and chased down the bus. It was, I was wrong. It didn't say, don't give up. It said, never give up. There's the sign that was on the bus. Just so funny just when you think something you get another sign oh. saying the opposite yeah just that little bit of encouragement or a little bit of direction happens all the time so it was like spirit was saying you know don't give up just do things differently so here's what my first lesson was this is my first lesson of surrender this whole process has been a lesson of surrender for us <laughs> first lesson was when Spirit called, I finally just dove in and thought, okay, fine, we'll do a workshop. Well, I didn't kind of consult with Spirit, since Spirit was the one nudging us. Maybe I should have consulted with Spirit as to what Spirit wanted. I didn't do that. So finally, that next morning after I got the don't give up sign, I meditated and said to Spirit, okay, this clearly is your show. It's not ours. What do you want us to do? <laughs> Help. And that very day, I ended up channeling all the information about the workshop, so all the documents that became the information that we put out for people. And it just, all, like, all of it just came to me. It was so easy. It just flowed. So, again, lesson in surrender. When you just let go and ask for guidance from spirit, instead of, you know, us humans, we want to take the bull by the horn and do it all ourselves, it's amazing how things flow when we actually work with spirit instead of against it. Now, of course, when it comes to many things that I do in my life, including workshops, timing is everything. And I originally thought, hey, the August long weekend would be great. Oh, right in the middle of tourist season. Oh, <laughs> that's just not going to work. No. Everything's going to be crazy expensive and crazy busy. So, hey, September long weekend. Yeah, first weekend in September, three days. All right, yeah, let's choose that one. Then we started hearing back from various individuals saying, Oh, right at the end of summer holidays, just preparing for winter work, just trying to get kids back to school. Exactly. Not going to work. And I'm thinking, well, that about does it then. But when would work? And the thought of the first weekend in October come up. And I'm thinking, nope, way too late, too chilly, too much chance of cold weather, <laughs> too much everything. No, no, don't want it, don't want it. And then, of course, the way things are, we hear back from a few people, yeah, that works for us, that would be okay, that's fine. Surrender number 946.3 hun <laughs> in this journey. Yes. I, I eventually caved in and just agreed to the, what we call in Canada, the Thanksgiving Day long weekend or the long weekend at the beginning of October. Yeah, so it was actually, ha this to add to that, I was getting the long weekend in October and um, there was no way I was going to tell Rob that because he was absolutely resistant to oh. October at all, any weekend in October. So I said to Spirit, hey, if, you, if that's the weekend that you want this, then you got to make it happen because I'm not telling Rob. <laughs> and yeah. then wouldn't you know, we're talking with our facilitators, Debbie and Dio, Kelly and Marla. And that weekend worked for everybody. That was the only weekend that seemed to work for everybody. In fact, Dio was like super excited because it was his birthday, birthday weekend. weekend. And he was already saying he planned to go somewhere for his birthday. So it was like, okay, well, October long it is. So I had to brace the news to Rob and he was like, okay, well, fine. If everybody else is willing to do this, then I surrender. <laughs> so now it was time for some manifesting when we... We, we hit the start button, we hit the go button. We decided everything was going to happen. So all a bunch of research that Angie had done started to come into place. We started to book the room and look at the bus for the, uh, for the 
doing the tour of the Rockies, which would be the last day, not knowing how many people were actually going to be there, wanting to either be part of the workshop or be part of the tour. There was all these plans that had to wait for people to start to book. But one of the first things that was a bit of a challenge was is that the beautiful building behind us actually has three rooms for conferences. And for the October long weekend, the bigger room, the room in the middle, the room we wanted, was already booked. Yes. So we had caved in, surrendered, and decided that the smaller room would be enough and we would have to just make sure we watched our numbers so that we didn't overcrowd the room for the amount of ambiance and atmosphere that we wanted. We weren't joking when we advertised the whole thing and said it's limited space. It was really limited space because we had a very small room. We could have, <laughs> let's just say if we would have tried, we could have squished 35 people into the smaller oh, room. That would have been really and, tight. And, and 35 people would have included facilitators and a small table to put stuff on and that would be about it. Yeah, and you'd ba barely be able to walk around anywhere. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm an awesome manifester. And I don't say that in ego. I just say that out of, we all are. We all are creators, right? We are co-creators with the universe. And I'm like, I wasn't called to see that room for no reason. So I'm going to make it happen. So what I did, this is one of the w many ways that I manifest. I printed out, hopefully it'll show up okay in here. Let's get a little closer. Ugh. She printed so, out this page that had pictures of the big room and what it looked like. Yeah. Right? And she stuck it right on our bathroom mirror, right where she would normally look. And it lived there for what, six I just, weeks? I just took it down yeah. the other day. It was still up even after the workshop. <laughs> so she started manifesting and she spread the word to the others to also manifest the bigger room. Yeah. And I even had this same printout at work. So I had it by my desk at work. And I had it at home, so every time I'd brush my teeth, morning and night, I would see this. And I just kept visualizing us in this room in a beautiful circle and everybody being able to go outside and sunshine. And Yes, that was part of what I was starting to manifest too. Me, of course, thinking, oh, October. Well, let's make the best of October. So I was manifesting, you know, blue skies, being able to see the summits if there was a cloud or two. Uh, warm temperatures, that was important. Wanted to come out to basically this little grassy spot that we're <laughs> sitting in right now and bring everybody out here and maybe do a little bit of grounding work. And you also wanted to do a manifesting exercise outside. So we were manifesting a lot. Manifesting exercise, grounding exercise, bigger room. I wanted a nice, bright, sunny day for the tour of the Rockies and the bus, whatever size of bus that was going to be. <laughs> I was actually manifesting that we'd be able to rent a larger maybe 15 to 24 person bus and I would I would be able to drive and narrate the tour of the Rockies so I was actually working on that too there was lots we were both oh, working on tons of stuff we were manifesting we had a manifestation list oh did we ever an arm long yeah so then I'm just looking at my notes to make sure because there's so much we wanted to make sure we told you guys um we get to the point where it's just a week before the workshop. Oh, actually, backtrack a bit. We ended up getting our room. Yeah, about three weeks before the uh, before the workshop, we got the notification that uh, the other people had switched to a different room, and that the, our nice big room was available. Yep. That was a celebration. Totally was. We were super happy. And I was surprised, but not, because I've done enough manifesting that I just... I believe, and that's how manifesting works, right? You have to believe that it's already happened. So when we got the email, I was like, okay, good. Like, of course this it, happened. It's supposed to happen. Almost like it's an expectation. Yes. But, but we didn't We didn't want to be pompous about it. No. But uh, it was, yeah, it was really something that really needed to happen. And also about that time, too, we were going through some very unseasonably cold, unsettled, slightly rainy, always threatening snow weather, which is very unusual for September. And I was thinking, yeah, let's get this all out of the way, and then we'll have a couple of sunny weeks right around the time of the workshop. I was stoked. Everything seemed to be looking just perfect. Yes. And then that brings us to the Monday just before the workshop. So the workshop started on the Friday, last Friday, October 5th. 5th. So that Monday night, we had a huge snowfall. And I mean huge. This was like record-breaking. 
Yeah. This for... was like more snow in one day than we normally get in an entire month. Yeah, in the Calgary area, the uh, snowfall was the biggest October single day snowfall on record. Any day of October, any year that they've been keeping records. And I was devastated. I, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I sat and I bawled all Monday night. I was so heartbroken. I was so mad at spirit. I'm like, you called us to do this workshop. We didn't want to do it in October. You told us to do it in October and then you're going to give us a bunch of snow. Like, what are you doing? I was so upset. I was looking at the forecast. I saw that there was literally no hope of the snow melting off of the field we're on right now uh, for doing outside exercises. I was thinking, oh, great. And so there could be road issues. The, the main highway coming to Banff was closed oh, for almost a full day. Yeah. So, yeah, I was, I was really, really quite disappointed and concerned. And also in the back of my mind was uh, for the tour of the Rockies, there was two roads that normally when they get enough snow falling in fall time, they just close the roads for the season. And there was two roads that went to places that our tour of the Rockies <laughs> was going to. So I was, I didn't even want updates on what was going on, but I had a feeling that one or one of those roads would end up being closed for the year before we had a chance to do the workshop. And for me, why I was so upset about the snow is because we had people coming from places like Taiwan, California, Florida. These are people that don't even have clothes and footwear for snow. snow. They've never seen snow, yeah. some of these people. So I'm like, I don't want to traumatize them. Yeah, I have people wondering what the heck they had flown into. <laughs> Completely. So, yeah, we were all of, all of a sudden, we were very somber. Yes. Very somber and uh, already willing to take whatever phone calls we got and put together whatever pieces we have and step forward with a workshop that we had envisioned going one direction with everything being best case scenario. And we were starting to get signs that best case scenario wasn't an option. Of course, we also thought that everybody that was attending would know the difference. <laughs> just because we know the difference. That's right. So then Thursday comes around. This was just last Thursday. And our facilitators start arriving. So Kelly and her wife arrived. And what's so funny is they had booked uh, a smaller vehicle. But because of the snow, they ended up upgrading. And synchronicity, I mean, this path, just it never gets old, right? They end up with what? Okay, well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I personally drive a light blue 2018 Mazda CX-5. I, I, I work with Mazda. I bought one, okay? So what do they end up with? A 2018 Mazda CX-5 light blue. The two vehicles together, unless you know what you're looking for, looked identical. So down the, the highway, the, we're driving twin vehicles. We're driving twin vehicles. To a twin flame workshop. <laughs> It was so funny. They had no idea. Nope. So, yeah, here we are, twins as vehicles. Yes. So they arrived. We had a good laugh, like just all of us burst out laughing over this whole vehicle thing. Then later that evening, Marla, Dio, and Debbie arrived at the airport. We picked them up, had just a wonderful evening of bonding with them. And then the Friday morning, we all six or however many of us there were. Yeah, I don't know, just call it six. Six, however many, <laughs> drove out to Banff together. And it How was about seven? really nice. Yes. Seven. Kelly's wife was with us too, and yes. she's spectacular, by yes. the way. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, we all drove out to the mountains together and just had such a wonderful time of bonding and connecting. Um, just a great day. So enjoyed that. That was another thing, though, uh, just as a little sub note, I had planned that we would rent like a nine person vehicle and have everybody driving out together. It actually turned out very interesting that we were in two vehicles and we stopped a couple of times and had, had some pictures. pictures and conferred notes. Uh, I had to let go very early with the thought of, OK, we were all being in the same vehicle. No, Rob couldn't be tour guide for everyone. But, you know, between Angie and I, one of us was in each vehicle. It worked. It, was, it worked and it was a ton of fun too. I was wondering what was going on in that vehicle. I got a text saying that I was driving a little too fast. <laughs> yeah, okay. You talk about backseat driving? No, this was vehicle following behind driving. That's right, it was text driving instead. Text, text driving. Fun, fun, fun. Yes. We had a great time driving out. 
So then by the time we got here, we got to go see the room and I was just in awe because the room was exactly what I was manifesting. It looked exactly like what I expected. And that's the wonderful thing about manifesting is that when it does happen, it's almost always what you wanted or better. At least that's always been my experience. And just a little sub note, we didn't like it when it snowed, but the snow added beautiful oh, definition to the mountains. It really did. Uh, it's just pictures happening all over the place. Yes. Yes, so everybody was loving the snow. So that evening we started, of course, with the workshop. Everybody started arriving and it was so, I can't even begin to tell you how exciting it was to meet all of these people in person. Yes. We were just like greeting everybody with hugs and the, the energy in the room, like there was no shyness and no like, oh my God, what am I doing here? Everybody was just chattering and talking and connecting and bonding even before we started. Yeah, you know, people would walk in, they. We, we tried to greet as many, as many as we could, but then we got broke off in little groups. We'd have to break away and come back and catch the next people that were walking in. And, and there was introductions. And was, and then, yeah, people were breaking on into their own small yeah. groups. And that actually would continue all weekend. Yes. But we'll continue on with that in a yes. moment. So it was just beautiful to see, like, true soul family. I mean, how many times have I said as we're, you know, we were... Um, talking about the workshop that we were so looking forward to meeting soul family well honest to god it was like everybody just fit in like they belonged together like they'd been together for many years it was just so and, beautiful to watch and and similar to uh, chicago and boston yes yeah, so people were just instantly bonding with each other totally here angie and i had been all distraught all week about snow there was no snow from the inside of that room's point of view. People were having a great time. Yes, and people actually were liking the snow. There was one lady from Australia, and oh, she was another one that I was totally concerned about with the snow. She was loving it. She was one of the first people here, and she was posting pictures in our group and just so excited. And I'm like, oh, thank God, because, you know, I'm packing, like, extra clothes for all of these people. <laughs> and, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a nurse. I'm a nurturer, right? It's like, I just want to make sure everybody's happy and safe and comfortable and I didn't have to worry at all surrender once again my lesson through this whole thing so on Friday night we gathered a bunch of questions from people on, on little cards and oh there was there had to have been 50 cards sorry I'm kicking you <laughs> there had to have been 50 cards and I'm thinking well through all this there'll be about 20 real questions there'll be a bunch of cards with the same question on it there was not one card that I was able to staple to another because they were basically asking the same question. I instantly realized that there was a huge amount of diversity in the group because every card stood alone. That also yeah. meant we had a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> but what was so neat and so different about this workshop of course, since we had been to both Chicago and Boston, is you can see how much the collective has raised their vibration, how much everybody has shifted. The questions were so different than what they were in previous workshops. The energy was different. There was a little less focus on twin, twin, my twin, my twin, and there was a little more focus on uh, what can we do as as part of being the collective yeah as far as stepping forward uh working with the changes uh that are coming along with the earth and everything else like that oh yes and how does my twin fit into that there's sure people are still concerned about their their twin and their twin flame journey but there was a lot more forward thinking i would call it yes the, the, as a collective, we've all stepped forward, and we could see that oh, difference so much, even from even from Boston to here. So it was it was it was very very interesting for me to see the shift in in the group. Yeah, and what was also neat about the group of people that came is the diversity. There was people that have been on this journey for over forty years. There were people that were brand new to the journey. There were actually two different people that weren't even sure they were really twin flames when they came. When they left, they had total confirmation by talking with the rest of the people and affirmation about, yeah, I've had that experience. Oh, that's a twin flame thing. I've experienced that too. So it was just beautiful to see the changes in people and the um, awareness shift in people through the whole weekend. And you know, people that showed up very shy, there was a couple of filmmaking people that showed up that were, that, uh, were part, part of the workshop and they were very shy to begin with and 
after a couple hours, they, they started to open right up. And the acceptance yep. that people had. The, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, first, just to elaborate on what Rob was saying, these two yeah. that came for just the, they just were coming for the Saturday because they couldn't, in their schedule, make it work for any other day. Well, they ended up enjoying the day so much that they changed their plans and stayed for the Sunday too. And the group just like, even though they weren't there on the Friday night, the group just like enveloped them in as if they'd been there the whole time. Same thing on the tour. We had one lady that wasn't able to make it for the workshop, but she came for the Monday tour of the Rockies. And same thing, the whole group just like brought her right in. Like yeah. she'd never been without everybody. Yeah, she, after the first half hour, she was chatting with everybody as if she'd been there all weekend. Totally. So, and that just goes to show true soul family, right? Like it doesn't matter how long you've been there or how short you've been there. You're in, you're in. Family is family. And it was just so nice to see how much everybody connected and bonded. And same thing on the Saturday morning before we actually, you know, we were all sitting in the room, but before we called everything to order, we didn't want to because everybody was just talking. There was this beautiful hum in the room of people talking. Like nobody was shy and nobody was sitting there going, oh my God, I don't want to talk to anybody. They were all like, you'd, you'd think they'd been together for years, the way they were all connecting. With all the questions that we had, we, we, we had the room set up as a circle. We would sit down, then we would do some questions, but you know, the first thing in the morning on the Saturday, as Angie mentioned, and also after breaks and after lunch times, there was another good time. Yes. Uh, it, it wasn't that it was hard to bring people back into the circle because they were so busy chatting in their own little groups that they'd created. It was, it, it was a situation where most people were having such good, valuable, strong bond and connecting conversations within the little groups yeah. that there was almost no hurry to come back to the big circle and continue on. It was only when people started to sit down saying, okay, it's big circle time that we would then bring everybody back because there was just so much work being done outside of the big circle that inside of the big circle it's true. could lose an hour here and there, just let people do what they were doing. Yeah. So that kind of covers Saturday, then Sunday. Um, this was what was really neat about doing a workshop in Banff compared to any other place that we have so far been. I'm sure there's other amazing places, but there's so much more to Banff than just sitting in a room and doing a workshop, right? There's so much nature. And of course, Banff is like the energy, Archangel Michael's oh. energy um, and Lake Louise, same thing. So we got to do a little extra things. We took people for a walk, all that wanted to come down to a place called Bow Falls. And there was just so much bonding that happened there as well on the walk. Then we all walked down to Banff Ave for dinner. Just so much extra time together, which we've not experienced in any of the other workshops. No, no, it was, it was, it was things that we set time aside for to do outside of the circle. That uh, it really, really helped bring people together, but people were bringing themselves together. Yeah. They were enjoying the energies. Yeah. And then speaking of the energies, when we did the Monday tour of the Rockies, it was so cool to watch people just be wowed by the mountains, the beauty. And this is where, again, the surrender had to happen for us. The surrender really had to kick in big time for me because, you know, those two little roads that I mentioned before that close when it starts to get to be bad weather, both were closed. We lost two destinations that were very, very dear to me. I had three of six or seven possible deaths destinations that I really wanted people to see two of them we couldn't get to so I had to surrender that we were just going to have four slash five stops that were still going to be spectacular in their own right but I knew the difference and she knew the difference but nobody else really knew the difference and everyone was having just a great fantastic time and I had to really give my head a shake and settle down and stop lamenting about what was being missed and look over my shoulder at the people on the bus or look out at when we were stopped at the people that were there and watch them absolutely just enjoying what they did get to enjoy. Yeah. And with that, why it again, spirit is always perfect, right? Everything is always in perfect alignment and perfect divine time if we will just surrender and trust that. And that was Rob's and my lesson through this whole thing. And it was perfect timing because 
if we had done everything that was on the schedule, it would have been rushed. It Ooh. would have been um, hurried. It wouldn't have been enjoyable. This way, people had time to just really enjoy and explore the places we did get to go. Um, it was beautiful to watch some of the people again. Here was my lesson in surrendering about the weather. It was snowing on the tour day. On the Saturday and Sunday, it was beautiful sunshine, sure. blue sky. Could have seen every summit, could have seen down every valley. Here it is, tour day. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but yet when we watch these people that have never experienced snow, I mean, actually one of them, I just read a post of hers this morning and she was so cute and saying like it was just magical to watch the snowfall and it was i mean i even enjoyed it and i live here and i see snow all the time right but to watch these people enjoy snow for the first time there was people making snow angels because they'd never walked in snow they'd never experienced snow before so who was i to decide what their experience should be what a beautiful lesson in surrender that you know what, what I thought was what everybody would want wasn't what everybody wanted. So it wasn't up to me to manifest perfect weather. It was perfect weather. That was my lesson. Yeah, kind of for me too, same thing. Now, of course, I added up everything that happened and everything that didn't happen. And I, of course, I've been thinking, well, you know, you could almost make another workshop and completely not do the same things you did on the previous ones. <laughs> totally. Now, I'm not but talking to Angie different. right now about other workshops. We're we're both still recovering our energies from the last one. It's uh, it's time for rest for us. Though we will be honest, we're already feeling nudges from spirit going, you're going to do this again. And we're like, okay, apparently we're going to do this again. So for those of you that were like, oh, I so wanted to come and I'm so sad I didn't get to go. Well, good news. That wasn't your only opportunity. Apparently, Spirit's already telling us there's going to be another one. Ugh. This time, my career will be different. I'll be able to help out more. Angie won't have to do 90 plus percent of everything. Yes. Because she's experienced, she'll only do 80 plus percent of everything. <laughs> I'm just being truthful, okay? <laughs> one last thing I wanted to share, because I had a lot of surrender to learn. On the drive home on the Tuesday, after the Monday tour of the Rockies, we were uh, taking... Um, I want to say Dio. Thank you. It wasn't Dio. I was going to say Dio had to leave early, so he didn't get to be with us for the tour of the Rockies. So we were driving Marla and Debbie home, and it was snowing again. Actually, on the back Monday. to the airport. It's a long drive yes. to drive them home. Sorry, yes. It wasn't all the way home. That would have been fun. We would have that... loved to have done that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we were just taking them to the airport. And it was snowing again. Again. And the roads. I, like to us the roads were fine but we, to people that don't drive these roads they probably weren't very fine yeah for people who had rented cars that had come from climates where they seldom see snow and ice we were concerned about them so i was in tears i, I mean i i couldn't hide it anymore i had had to do a lot of surrendering all weekend and finally by monday i was just really sad because i was concerned there was one person for sure that i knew that had rented her own vehicle and was driving back to the airport to go back to California. So California is not a place that's used to snow. So for her to be driving in snow, I was concerned. So I'm in tears. Marla and Debbie, bless their hearts, they were so wonderful. You know how people talk about the onion layer and that you know you learn a lesson, but then you have to learn it again and again. And we learn things deeper and deeper. It's not like I've never surrendered in my life. I mean, you can't get to union if you haven't learned oh, surrender. Learn to surrender. Oh my lord. But this was a whole new practice in surrender. So I had Marla reminding me, you're not responsible for everybody else's creation. Yes, you wanted nice weather and we get that, but other people needed the snow for their own experience. All of these people we shared that were just like wowed by the snow. And she said the people that have like fear that they need to work through, that's their stuff and they need that. So it's not up to you to create everybody else's experience. And I was like, thank you. Like, I needed to be told that. And then I had Debbie doing some beautiful work with me as we're driving. Yeah, holding holding Angie's oh. hand was, was not enough. <laughs> no, she was just really wonderful. She did a beautiful thing that was called the Sedona Method. I'm not going to go into it, but if you um, want more information, you can certainly contact Debbie or you can do your own research. But it was simple yet so profound the the work that came out of it and learning to let go of control 
I'm a type A Aries kind of person. Control is what I do. I'm like, let's get her done kind of person. And this was not a let's get her done kind of process. This whole weekend was about allowing people to have their own experience and not manifesting their experience for them. So it was learning what to manifest and what not to and how to surrender and when to surrender. And our drive back to the airport with Marla and Debbie was just so profound for me. And I just wanted to thank them right here yeah. for all of their work with me. I mean, here we were doing this workshop to help other people and we ended up getting our own help, which is this, just this path, right? It's not like we're all islands and we're only here to serve. We're always in circle serving and helping each other. That's right. And, you know, and this... And this is why we had the people with us that we had as far as absolutely as far as our uh, facilitators were concerned. And it is because with between the group doing a great job on themselves and and our facilitators helping us because because, you know, it, it, it takes a great amount of diversity to to catch all the energies of a group yes. and then be able to help all the situations of a group and it yeah. just really really showed that it was just an awesome awesome mix of capabilities and oh, understandings so was so on that note we wanted to wrap this up um with some comments from some of the um people that experienced the workshop but before we do that we wanted to first thank all of our facilitators debbie dio Marla, Kelly, we so appreciate all of you, all your work, all your time, all your effort. Um, you really gave to this group and yes. they appreciated you as much as we do. So thank you for being a part of this. It wouldn't have been the same without you guys. And also thanks to all the attendees. <laughs> Absolutely. I, as I was hugging as many attendees as I could find <laughs> uh, for when they were departing to go home, I thanked them for attending because the amount that they added, they weren't just sitting there. The The amount of talking that happened, the amount of participation in the big circle oh, it bouncing beautiful. back, it, it, it really, really was. Everybody was there for each other as well as for their own personal growth. And it was just a great thing to watch. Yeah. So, yeah, on that note, we've pulled together just some of the comments that they've been posting either on Facebook or in the group that we have. So some of them said, Dear Soul Family, thank you for such a wonderful, transformative, and insp inspiring and supportive weekend. Another one said, Thank you from the bottom of my heart, my peeps. Isn't Let that it, sweet, my peeps? <laughs> it felt amazing to be with you all. That was a common, common theme. Yeah. And another one said, I've come out of the closet, so to speak. Here's my manifesto of a way of saying this is my path and I refuse to be ashamed or hide any longer. So feeling comfortable to admit to other people that I'm a twin flame, you know, it's everybody's got to do that in their own way and in their own time. But this person after the workshop felt like they were ready to share that with other people. Beautiful. Another comment was, I am tired, but my heart is full. Yeah, we all stayed up way we too late. Too eight, <laughs> you, we were all tired. <laughs> this is what happens when one spends time with their tribe. We twins believe in and live our lives immersed in true divine love. Little by little, the world will be changed through this energy of love. Thank you all for your presence. These moments of pure love energy are precious and will help us move forward on this journey. Beautiful. I really like that comment. Yeah. That's very much how I felt. Yeah, it was so beautiful. And another one said, I'm very grateful for being able to make this journey happen. The whole expense to Banff um, as I'm truly, truly keen to transform myself. I just take a leap of faith and trust the universe loves me and supports me. And I'm grateful to receive the love and abundance in all forms of expression. Yeah. Beautiful. And then someone said, great time spent with twins. Yes. <laughs> There's comments all the way down the board, but the common theme is, is that most people just felt uh, a connection with the group. Yeah. And you know, you're, I, it's, it's kind of really almost backwards, but when people have had a great time and they're getting ready to go home, usually the better the time, the more tears there are. <laughs> and I noticed that in Chicago and Boston. And, uh, I, I actually measured how well this was all received when people were getting ready to get on the bus. I was actually counting tears 
of people who are sad to leave, sad to be leaving their their new tribe. Uh, and yes, there was a quite a few quite a few tears. Myself, I'm usually one to shed tears, and I had a couple fall, but I felt more of a connection, more of a thought that I had not not just met some people and we're never going to see them again. Now that I've been to my third workshop, I'm actually looking forward to being an attendee and let's say a fourth, fifth, sixth, or maybe facilitating again. It all doesn't matter. I no, really just want to just happy to go. Just go to the <laughs> workshops, and I'm now not sad when a workshop ends because I'm already thinking about the next one that there will be. I'm looking forward to, to the next one and yeah. meeting some people again. Now that I know that it's not about never seeing people again, totally. Uh, totally. I'm very happy for the experience that's just happened. I'm excited for the next one, wherever it ends up showing up and being, and I will see people that I've met before again. So not as many tears for me, uh, just excitement for the future. Yeah. So to wrap up in terms of surrendering, I know we all on this journey have to learn to surrender. And if I can just wrap it up by saying, you know how at the beginning I was saying, I was kind of annoyed with Spirit asking us to do this workshop at this time. Again, I didn't have a problem doing a workshop, but I just wasn't liking their time. Well, I just discovered something this morning as we're driving out here. Today is October 14th. It's a Sunday. It was exactly one year ago today, Sunday, October 15th, that we did our very first ever video that we were called to do in sharing this whole journey. So, Spirit always, always, always has a reason, has a divine plan, and has a purpose much greater than what we understand. And I think it's absolutely fascinating, the timing of how this has all come about, that one year exactly later, we have shared our full story, we've done a workshop, and now we're telling a video of the workshop a year later. Spirit, I'm sorry for getting mad at you. You do have a reason, and I will honor you and surrender. <laughs> and I am really seeing through the experience of others and ourselves that Spirit knows how to push us to 99% of what we can handle, but never to 100. We always have a little bit left over. So if you're struggling with Spirit and surrendering, I invite you to maybe understand that there is a bigger purpose than maybe you don't know yet and know that spirit really does have your back and there really is a purpose that you may see later in life that uh, will kind of enlighten you as to why you're being called to do what you do. So honor spirit. It surrenders a beautiful thing. Okay. And on that note, we're going to say goodbye. We love you guys and we will certainly be back with more videos soon. Bye. Bye.